a Buzz exclusive. He's never done an interview on local television until tonight. Got a call last Tuesday. Say the artist wants to sit down and talk before his big show in the Twin Cities. You don't have to ask me twice. I don't know who was more nervous, me or him. But once we started to talk, it was fascinating. Snap, that's the pop. 36 stagehands. Five band members. 12,000 fans. But there's only one artist. Last night was a thrill for the folks in Fargo, but the Jam of the Year tour reaches a bittersweet climax for the artist on Wednesday. It's the first time he'll perform in a hometown arena in nearly a decade. A performance that will reveal more than his name has changed. Ten years since you've played a big arena in the Twin Cities. Why, does it, why has it been so long? Uh, to be perfectly honest, um, the last few bands I've had, um, they didn't like playing in Minneapolis very much. Why? Mm -hmm. I used to have big troops with a lot of um, dancers and rappers and mm -hmm. horn players, and they didn't, um, they didn't receive much adoration from the uh, Minnesota press, so they didn't like performing here very much. Do artists in Minnesota get the respect they deserve? It seems like you have to go away before Minnesotans say, okay, yeah, this is cool. Well, the fans are cool. The uh, crowds that come out to see us basically all uh, act as foolish as we do, um, so to speak. But the um, music press is a little uh, fickle, and they tend to live in the past. They want what they uh, had as opposed to what they need. Whatever the artist used to be is what they're most comfortable with? Yeah, when, usually when they first become aware of the artist. Um, I, t I understand that to some degree. I tend to um, like the things that I uh, grew up with more so than what I'm getting and hearing amongst um, musicians today. No merchandising, no agent, no manager, no outside label, no charts, and you are happy. Oh, yeah. I mean, the prefix of manager is man, and I've always thought that I was a pretty strong man, so I don't need any help in that area. Can you explain your strategy to market and dis distribute your music on the Internet with the crystal ball and the truth? Mm -hmm. um, what we've done is created a database uh, and just by um, uh, talking with people who come to the concerts and uh, friends that we have on the internet we've found that um, there are a lot more people out there than I was being told when I was with Time Warner so <clears throat> we um, found out a way to cut out the middleman and in fact take the lion's share of the profit which allows us to uh, make it make our studios and our facilities available so other musicians can come in and record free of charge and in fact press their own CDs up like this one Larry Graham GCS 2000 <laughs> and you know uh, send it directly to the uh, consumer without uh, paying somebody who wasn't in the recording process or creative process to begin with. There is a way that your fans can talk to you online personally, and that's ask the artist? Uh, yes. Well, it's ask and then my name. Mm -hmm. The artist, again, is a name coined by the press and people who don't really want to respect the fact that I've adopted an unpronounceable symbol for a name. You did say that now that you have dropped Prince, that Prince is no more, you're immune. You seem more immune to criticism. I don't go by the name. Uh, something, I've found something very interesting is that um, if you don't hear someone say your name and then something very critical and mean afterward, it has no effect on you, you know, so if 
they say the artist this or the artist that, or the artist formerly known as Prince or something like that. I mean, it just bounces right off. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't even hear it. It doesn't register as anything. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that doesn't mean to say that that was the reason why I changed my name. It's just one of the other aspects I've learned about uh, growing. And to paraphrase a quote, you said, if you could go into a studio every day and produce awe-inspiring music as just a normal everyday person, you would do it every single day and that would turn out to be a blessing and a curse yeah and um i'm in studio rehab now so, <laughs> um, a couple more weeks i think i'll be all right but um recording and and and, and playing so much only sometimes poses a poses a health hazard when you don't sleep we were up till seven this morning doing lights and I had lost track of time and went into a jam that lasted about 30 minutes you know by then it was 6 30 in the morning and you know everybody's looking at me like I need um, assistance I don't see you in 20 years from now doing a dinosaur tour I was going out and touring at 60 for like 18 year olds is there a point in which you will stop God willing, I make it to 60, I'll definitely be playing. So you can call me what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa's cool. Yeah, Grandpa's cool. Go ahead on. <laughs> and Grandpa still whooped that behind. <laughs> um, now, cool things happen when you interview the artist. Well, the folks from the spectacle shop in New Brighton stopped by the station. They said they couldn't reach the artist to tell him that his specially made sunglasses are in. I figured since we're new buddies now, they give the glasses to me to give to him. So, if the artist is watching, you want your glasses? You gotta give me a call. We're gonna have... Well, when Larry Graham in Graham Central Station opens for the artist tomorrow night, he will funk up the crowd with some of the old hits like Dance to the Music from his Sly and the Family Stone days, but he'll rock you with the new music from his upcoming album called GCS 2000. Graham collaborated with the artist on the CD and says it's been a blessing to work without deadlines, middlemen, or label executives breathing over his shoulder like the old days. They just liked the music. Mm -hmm. and, felt okay. and there's going to be something that you're going to like. And not just when you listen to the CD, but when you come to the show. Um, because we're not just trying to play one type of something. We're trying to play heart music, music that will reach your heart, come from our heart and, and directly at your heart. Now, Graham's latest is on MPG Records, and since the artist is into the Internet right now, you'll probably be able to hear it online. And the word is you can check it out on the artist's website soon. Sorry, there's no release date yet. Now, when it comes to winning free tickets for the artist's concert tomorrow night, women had more staying power than the guys did. The contest was based on two of the artist's songs, Kiss and Little Red Corvette. Whoever kissed the Corvette the longest won the two seats. Twenty people puckered up, but Julie Martinez held out for the longest three hours and 54 minutes. She wanted them tickets, didn't she? Now that's the buzz on the artist. Make sure you stay to uh, at 10. We're going to have more with them. And so what... for a very special report. That's right. Minnesota's Royal Rocker gave an exclusive interview to Robin Robinson. Mm -hmm. And Robin, I know you were very amazed at just how much he opened up to you. I'm just like, pinch me still. And <laughs> he was so great. He was so charming and so gracious. Just sat and talked and talked and talked. A man who doesn't talk to anybody. And, you know, with the concert coming up, everyone is calling in favors and, and begging for a ticket to tomorrow's landmark show by the artist. The first time he's played before an arena-sized crowd in 10 years. We got front row seats Monday night. No, better than that. I sat right next to him for an exclusive interview. Now, if you tuned in for part one at nine, here's part two. When he steps on stage, it's electric. According to the artist, that's where he's happiest. No meddling record companies, no media, nothing to interfere with him or his music. 
The artist is his own man these days, emancipated from past pressures, and comfortable enough to sit down and talk to us about where he's been and where he's headed. At the time that you were playing, there was no Black Rock Coalition. There was no support base for artists, African-American artists, that played rock. So what was that like for you playing? And to, to quote from the line from Purple Rain, when Billy says, no one digs your music but yourself. Did it seem like that sometimes for you? Uh, sometimes. But um, I've always been the uh, type of person that dance to the beat of my own drum, so um, I don't let other people define what it is that uh, makes me. Do you think that you made it possible to explore sexuality in a wholesome way at a time when the country during the 80s was becoming very moralistic? Well, I, to be perfectly honest, I've always just written as it came to me. I didn't sit down and you know, I, I don't, um, I'm not a real social person, you know, I don't hang out a lot, you know, I have my friends, but I don't, um, so I'm, I don't really respond to what society says, so, you know, we don't use words like wholesome or, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, bad or good, things like that, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're writing, you don't think of those things, you just try to be the instrument rather than uh, an editor. What is happening with uh, Love for One Another Charity? I know it's made over a um, million dollars in for donations, mm -hmm. and you talked about uh, a clinic and a daycare center mm -hmm. and an art school. So where are all those projects now? Well, we just purchased the land for the um, uh, hospital, and uh, hopefully there'll be educational facilities on the property. It's directly across from Paisley Park. And uh, uh, as you say, we've uh, given away a lot of money. And uh, I found out recently that money is sort of like blood. It, if you hoard it and keep it all uh, tied up amongst yourself, you sooner or later get sick. So we just try to keep it in circulation. It seems like you, you have worked hard to grow past a stereotype or perhaps a criticism by music critics that you were eccentric or that the day of those eccentric artists are over that that you are you're really working to be more accessible well, <laughs> I don't understand music criticism uh, to begin with I don't really understand criticism I don't think I mean this couch we're sitting on is if you don't like it don't sit on it but it is, you know. It's, it's a waste of time to crit criticize this couch. <laughs> it's just a waste of word, words. He's so wonderful. Now, the artist concert tomorrow night sold out. But today, one Twin Cities woman managed to get her hands on, or should we say, lips on front row seats.